Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Welcome to Revolution Gathering, uh, Sunday the 15th, the most unlucky Sunday of all. <laughs> so good morning everyone, good to see you. I hope this, I'm really worried about this mic, I'm going to make all sorts of weird noises with it being right there. Give me a second. <laughs> Sacrifices, guys. Bubble soap. I like bubble soap. You know, my mom's... My mom started out as doing puppet ministry. Like, <laughs> puppets. And the puppets, Susie Moppet, was a... Uh, was an old bubble bath top, head topper. I think a porky pig that my mom made. And... Uh, so when they made, it's funny because when they made a doll, it wasn't actually Warner Brothers that asked them to not make it look like a pig. It was the Jim Henson's who said, take the pig nose off. So anyway, there's my, my soap history for today. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of it. I like to, I use it. I'm a soap user. Grew up in a dial, yellow bar soap. Family. I don't use that anymore, but yeah, that was that. All right, folks, let's hit this. Um, horrible things are happening in the world uh, with Palestine and Israel. And I have not caught up on any of the news this morning, so, uh, but it's all been horrific and, and really damaging to the eyes and mind and, and brain to see what these folks are, are, are doing each other. And uh, I am a supporter of nonviolence, and I am anti-war. And uh, I, I am hoping and praying for a ceasefire there. Um, this is why we talk about arguing well and, and disagreeing well. Um, ultimately, like when it gets to that point, that's, you know, if, if we're free from, uh, unfortunately, if we're, when we don't allow conflict to happen, uh, through communication, um, and we lord it over one another. Uh, when communication uh, completely breaks down and all hope is lost, uh, war happens, violence happens, death happens. Um, and uh, it really hits us when we see it physically. I don't think we often realize how much we do this to each other mentally with our wars and our arguments and our fights and, and how much we wound people uh, through uh, our religions and uh, sometimes uh, through our lack of uh, grace and empathy we have towards each other. And uh, when we deny to kind of recognize each other's humanity and then when we return the favor to people like that, this is what happens, you know? Uh, you have a group of people who don't recognize each other's right to belong. And so um, that's what happens. That's why when, when people kick back and push back on me and be like, well, I can't disagree with someone who doesn't recognize me as a person. I'm going like, you know, you might be the only hope for the rest of those people, you know. Um, and for those people, you might save those people's lives by having tough conversations and by arguing well. Um, so... I think that's something we, we've got to allow to, 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 to weigh on us and our convictions. Now, today's talk is not about this horrific war. Um, you know, it could be, but it's not. Um, so today's talk is I, I have decided, like, I feel like, you know, I often get so much pushback 
for for the for asking people to to disagree well or to not cut people off or to not like uh, uh, use uh, like an example. I think I've used this example before. Um, you know, arguing with somebody about church taxation, and then they start telling me like, "Oh, this reminds me of the." sexist argument or denying racism argument. You know what I mean? It's like, how, how does it, re <laughs> like, really? Oh, because I said all churches aren't bad. So, you know, now I'm uh, uh, an apologist for all, like, uh, horrible people. Um, we shut people down with the, uh, progressives really are good at it because they get really self-righteous, you know? Conservatives, we've kind of lost respect because, I mean, how often can they threaten us with hell or, you know, just be assholes? But, like, conservatives, like, you know, you know, you want to be like, oh, I mean, I'm not racist. I mean, I've struggled. I mean, blah, 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 you know, and you want to, like, struggle with this thing. And for me now, it's just kind of like trying to, like, redirect the conversation back to where it was. Like, you know, because it's, it's a great way when you're losing a conversation to say to someone that they're acting like, um, racists and uh, heterosexists and, uh, you know, and sexists, you know, if you really want to shut down the old conversation, you know, about Diet Coke or Pepsi or Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke, you know, you just say, oh, you know, you start bringing up really horrible shit to, sh to destroy your liberal brothers and sisters. Anyway, but today's not so much about liberal and conservative that will be a, a point because we do live in such a divided country in a divided world and we are stuck in this uh, uh, binary thinking um, you know how we talk a lot about like diversity of thoughts you know maybe we need non-binary thoughts too as well you know um, are you really non-binary or are you stuck on good and evil and who's in and who's out and um no room for nuance and no room for arguing. But I'm just saying, like, the, if we don't get brave, people get hurt. People die. You know? Um, that's why legalism doesn't work. You know, like, trying to set one group rule for every single person to, to have to live by. Um, you know? Like, I don't need you to defend me. But there are some people who do need you to defend them. You know what I mean? And there are some people that that means a lot to. You know, so it's hard to have these like, just these rules of like, well, this is what you're supposed, you know, uh, nuance and humanity is, is quite unique. And, and I would like for us to be able to experience our humanity and our uniqueness to its fullest and be able to have tough conversations um, and not threaten people with hell or cancellation you know <laughs> because those things to me are just both ridiculous and don't have grace in them you know it's the asterisk next to grace so um but i get a lot of pushback so today i wanted to just i i feel like sometimes i'm a bit edgy or passive aggressive about things that i deal with so i just want to lay it out on the table for you all today and this will be the type of talk that when people go, oh, you, know, you don't understand, you know, this will be the talk that I refer them to. Like, um, <laughs> oh, you should listen to this, this talk of, uh, of, of grace, about grace and arguing well and what I do there and why. And so I'm going to be very vulnerable with you all today. I mean, I'm always vulnerable, but this is going to be really vulnerable. Um, J of Diamonds. It's um, my bookmark. Because um, I'm a diamond in a rough. Um, so verbal. Uh, verbal. <laughs> verbally vulnerable today is, is what I'm going to be with you. So, uh, you know when people say, oh, I understand. And you're like, you have no idea. <laughs> you don't understand. Well, I, I'm going to pitch that I understand. And I'm going to throw this all to you and, and see what you, um, what you think here. Um, look at this. We have tiny cottages and, and, and soap. This is amazing. People love soap. You 
you, you got to have soap in a tiny cottage. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading from the comments to all the listeners online. Um, <laughs> just some of the listeners are very cool. All right, folks. Grace is not always my first thought, believe it or not. I have preached grace. Revolution's been going, it'll be next year, will be 30 years, but I, I've only been preaching grace for 27 years. So my first couple of years, I was kind of flying solo and really didn't know what grace was because I thought it was just a, a song. And I thought God hated me for the first two years I did Revolution. How's that for transparency? So grace is not always my first thought. You know, and revenge is always an option. You know, I, I do have a vengeful mind. And sometimes, you know, if I only get revenge in my mind, you know, when you go to sleep and you have the, like, the, the fantasies or you have the fantasy arguments in the shower, sometimes I have the, the revenge fantasies. Um, I remember when I was in high school, um, I used to have this fantasy of, of uh, singing Head Like a Hole to, uh, in front of Jerry Falwell's uh, Liberty University to all of the people there. That is a weird revenge fan. Like, I don't know what that would have done. Um, but I was going to tell them the truth. Trent Reznor style, industrial strength, truth, right? Um, and I've done things I'm not proud of as well. So there have been times where I have, people have tasted the wrath of uh, Jay Baker. Uh, one of my buddies used to, 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 to ask me if I was just going to read my enemies list on, uh, for the sermon on Sunday. So that was always funny. Um, so here we go. Um, grace is not always my first thought. Revenge is always an option in my mind. Um, you know, and, and, and so when folks tell me that they don't want to disagree with people who don't recognize them as equals, like, I get it. Like, um, for part of me is like even more mad because you're probably somebody I love and care about. And so in a group I care about, so I want to fight for you. You know what I want to mean? I'm like, Oh, let me just, <laughs> let me take care of this. Give me a few minutes, you know, with them and the, uh, turn, turn the cameras off in the questioning room, you know, um, you know, get the hose and the, and, and the, the phone book out. I've seen enough movies. I don't know exactly what those do, but I, I could guess, I guess. Um, So I more than understand this type of thing, you know, because I, I, I know what it's like to be cornered by people who want to beat the hell out of you because of who you are or what you are. Um, for me, it was just as I was younger, it was because of who my family was. Um, but, you know, I've also been robbed and, and, and beaten up before by people who didn't know who the hell I was, just thought I was, you know, who does this cocky little guy think he is? <laughs> um, But war on your behalf has usually been my thought. I mean, when I started preaching grace, I was the most angry grace preacher you'd ever heard in your life. And now I know why I had so many um, Calvinist friends. Because, you know, Calvinists, they really love grace, but only certain people get it. Um, well, some of the, most of the Calvinists I know. And I didn't realize that. You know, and so that's why they probably really liked me. They're like, oh, yeah, this guy talks about grace, but in a really shitty way. I like the way he judges with that grace. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I remember my dad when I was talking once, he's like, son, come up here and tell the people about grace. It was like right when he got out of prison. And I just stood there to this huge church full of people um, and was like, where were you? Like, we just went through hell and none of you were there. And so it wasn't like me talking about grace. It was me being like, where the fuck were you? Like my family was falling apart. You know, like my mom, I, I didn't even live with any of my parents by the time I was 16. You know, all this shit. You know, you, I was just, you guys know. I, I talk about my life on this thing all the time. That's why we got to find a location hopefully next year um, so I can interact with people and, and tell their stories. Um, <laughs> not mine. Um, 
So war on, your, on others' behalf is, has often been my first thought. You know, and then, you know, when, when, because for me, when friends are silent, it's the worst. You know, when, when friends don't stand up for friends or stick up for friends or help each other out, you know, and I saw that so much of that as a kid where it was like either scapegoating or like, oh, I don't want to get involved. You know, oh, it's too sticky for me. You know, and you're just watching your family get their ass handed to them and then you're getting your ass handed to you in school and all your friends are just kind of like, well, leave me out of this, you know, and you're going like, what is this world? Like, why do people not give a shit? And, um, and so, you know, have you seen the Terminator movies? Beep, 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 beep. Let's, at least the first two Terminator movies. I know there have been a, quite a few. Um, I really liked the Sarah Connor Chronicles. If you haven't seen that, unfortunately it got canceled before it had a proper ending. But it's really a good show. But the Terminators, you know, they get these, this, they see, this, we see their screen and it gives them options like, I'm sorry, F you, get, you know, all these like different options of, of how they can respond to people's questions. Like, you know, kill, you know. And I, I would say that in my Terminator screen, the brrrr, <laughs> Grace is usually like number three, guys. I'm not going to like, you know, it's like usually like devastate them, <laughs> make fun of them. Grace. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, um, it's tough. Like, so in my Terminator thing, Grace is not the first choice. And I say this because I'm not like, I feel like some folks, especially folks who are, are, are like progressive folks, and I'm a leftist, I'm a like freaking almost communist guys, okay? So I get it, but some of my leftist people think I'm like, just like, oh, he's a white straight male and everything's good and he just wants us all to be better and he has his heads in the cloud. His heads, because I have two. Um, I have my head in the clouds. And uh, what I'm here to say is that I don't have my head in the clouds, that I feel these pains, I feel the anger. And even when you reach out, I, mean, I feel anger towards you. When you're telling me, I, got my head, I want to be like, Head in the clouds, mother, you know, but rather I'd try to keep the conversation going. People are like, why doesn't he stop with that? Why? He's just beating a dead horse. How many people? You just got to ignore him. I'm like, I, no, I want to argue well and come to a, a, a point, an inclusion, a conclusion. You know? Um, it's tough, folks. I'm not saying I'm a Terminator. I'm not saying I was a rejected model Terminator and just sent back in the past to live out my life because I couldn't do much. <laughs> he can't really spell, <laughs> nor can he kill. <laughs> just send him back and, you know, talk to, you can just talk to a screen. You can have some kids. Let's just send them back. I know what hate feels like. I know what resentment feels like. I know what it feels like to want to see people suffer for hurting people you love. I have sat in rooms with my LGBTQ friends and seen them treated like horrifically, like shit. And of course I was like, boom. I was always the bad, I would be the bad cop in those situations when I was a soul force. And even they would be like, Trey, we're nonviolent. You got us, <laughs> you know, but I would be so like filled with rage. But that rage just wasn't on their behalf. Their rage was also on my behalf of realizing like, oh, so many people didn't want, so many people didn't defend my family. So many people never said anything good. You know, they had plenty of shit to say, but like, what about the good things, you know? And so I, I feel like I was there, you know, we were in it t together. We were suffering together. We were feeling pain together. And it took a long time to understand what nonviolence really means. It took a long time to understand what Jesus really meant by love your enemy and do good to those who persecute you. I mean, it was really tough. It, dying to your flesh. And, and I'm going to share a few scriptures that I think if you hear in this context, it will give you a different view. But I'm not done with my, my, uh, my vulnerability yet. Let's just dive right into, like, why, this is usually how people understand, like, 
like the, if you see people who live a forgiving life or a graceful life or even if some people who are quiet and you think, oh, they're cold. But sometimes people who are really quiet have just been through so much shit. They just don't have anything in them left anymore, you know. So we want to, I mean, I remember one time when I was in, living in Los Angeles and I had all these guys be like, oh, man, we thought you were a stuck up snob and stuff like this. And I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm really kind of like insecure. And, and you know, oh, we just thought you were like, oh, well, white boy thinks he's so cool because these are a lot of my... My, 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 my uh, Latino and Latina friends who, who told me this. And I was like, really? I guess what? I was cool. <laughs> um, you know, um, but it was, you know, oh, you're always walking so fast. And I just thought you were too good for us. I was like, no, man, I, I was just scared. I was scared that you wouldn't like me, you know. Um, I wasn't cool enough. I wasn't Christian enough. I wasn't whatever enough that I wasn't enough. Um, so, you know, I know what it feels like to have resentment and carry resentment and carry hate for years. I know what it, uh, it's like to live a life of fear. I do now. Like, I have turned in a bunch of job applications and I haven't heard any back from anybody. I, I did hear back from one and said we didn't get the job, you know, and, and the other places just haven't contacted me. And, you know, I'm having a hard time raising money for revolution and keeping this thing on its feet. And it's, I'm living fear every day that, like, I'm going to not have the money to be able to, like, take care of my kids and, like, have a house to, or an apartment to rent anymore. And then I'm going to be homeless. Like, I mean, I, I live in that thought daily. And it makes me want to give up. It makes me want to stop talking to you folks. It makes me want to not give up. It makes me just want to be a hermit. And, and, you know, but I got kids. And I can't do that. Okay, so I get it. My dad used to always say that shit, and, and I would be like, oh, poor Jim. But now I get it. He was genuinely depressed. It's probably eventually what pushed him to the edge he's at now. Um, so, and to feel betrayed by people you love and care about. Like, as a kid, I felt that all the time. You know, it would always be like another security guard comes on and says something mean on the news or things like that. And then years later, they come back and there's reconciliation. Because to me, these people weren't just employees for my family. They're people I loved, you know, and cared about. Um, you know, even I have friends through the years who are other pastors who would always be like, yeah, we know your dad's really a piece of shit, Jay, but, you know, you just keep defending him. It's cute, you know. I've had, like, biblical scholars say that shit to me. I'm like, listen, I lived that stuff. You know, so I know what it's like to not just be, like, to be discounted, to feel that discount, to feel that, like, you don't belong. Now, this isn't me just here saying, like, I'm, I'm just here to complain. But what I'm trying to say is, like, grace does not come from an easy place for any of us. Arguing well is a battle for all of us. So when I ask you to do it, I'm not asking you to argue well because I think it's going to be rainbows and flowers. I don't think the world will ever... I think the world's in a shit place right now. I think it's in a horrific place right now. I think the church is in a shit place right now. I think hum humans are, 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 are become worse because of social media. So what I'm trying to do is say, how do we leave this world a little bit better than the state it is in now? You know, but it does require us going through our little Terminator list and being like, oh, cut them off at the knees, uh, call them a racist, uh, call them a homo. Uh, you know, oh, OK. Oh, disagree. Well, oh, uh, that but that takes a long time. It does take a long time. So recently I got a double shot. I mean, I had a person call me a fake and revolution of fraud and that we they shouldn't give us money and all this stuff. And it really, like, I was like, God, this person knew the places that hit me because I hate raising money because of my family's, the stigma around my family's past. And uh, so this person was like, oh yeah, boom, 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 and hit me right where it hurts. And, and then they posted up a video they kept posting videos of my dad, and I clicked on one, and I said, I, I don't watch my dad's stuff on purpose, for a reason. I just don't watch it because I just want to try to be nice to him and be his son. And I know we disagree a lot on theology and a lot on politics. And, um, you know, he might be right about the world's going to end, but not in the way he thinks. Who knows, you know? Um, I know during COVID, we were all like, oh, should we drive up to uh, dad's bunker? Um, but the, in the video, 
I had this really big talk with my dad, and I honestly would not have been able to have this conversation on the telephone with my father had I not gone through like a year and a half of psychoanalysis. Like, I mean, it was just, I was prepared, made the call, had a long conversation, and then this video clip that this guy sent that for the, out of my best, name, like I should have been like, don't click it, really don't click it, don't be an ass, Jay. And then it was like, oh yeah, click it. And I was like, click it. There was my Terminator taking care of myself. And so um, I clicked into this video clip and it was my dad talking about that conversation, but not naming me particularly, but he's like, I was trying to bring this kid. This... He, he first starts to say son and then changes it. He goes, S someone <laughs> back to Jesus, you know? And the fact that he doesn't think like I need to be brought back to Jesus because I, oh, I like scholarship and I like philosophy and I like theology. Like it, it, things aren't simple. There's nuances. There's problems with the Bible. Like now all of a sudden I, you know, I'm spending my life talking to you about Jesus, but not the right Jesus, I guess. But he goes, you know, and he said, do you think a loving God would send people to hell? And he's like, false doctrine is in you know, entering our society, false doctrine is everywhere, heresy, you know. And I'm watching my dad say, I'm, you know, this after I've like really let it out with him, go on TV and talk about our conversation in a very passive aggressive way. You know, I me, mean, I would have just talked about it. Like, I talked to my son, he doesn't believe in hell, it's troubling to me. Maybe we should have him on and we could talk about it. Um, that's not how it worked out. It's just now, I, I'm not going to talk to him now for another four years. I don't know. Um, I send pictures to my kids. He don't hear back. I sent a message to him saying I saw this video and I don't hear back. And so my first thought isn't like, how am I going to argue well with him? You know, my first thought is, well, maybe that guy on Twitter who's obsessed with me denouncing my dad is right. And maybe I should just say, you know, denounce him and denounce the Bible because the Bible and Christianity have caused so much goddamn pain in people's lives and torn so many lives apart that maybe I should just say, hey, guess what, everybody? This is a bunch of shit. I don't believe it anymore. It's done just to hurt people, and it's hurting people. It's tearing apart families, and let's throw it out. And that's the first thought. Like, screw him. I'm trying to watch my language. Do this. I'm done. You know, I I'm done. My family's been broken apart. My mother's dead. Everybody can go to hell. I mean, that's how it feels. Um... Having family choose religion and really like a, like a man-made American religion over you hurts like hell. You know what I mean? Like it really hurts like hell to have your family go. And that's why I understood my LGBTQ brothers and, I understand, and sisters. I even understand them more because it's like and they's and them's. You know, like it's because it's like having your family... And not even be well versed, like you know, they're in their, their traditions. Not even a tradition, you know, fundamental. They do fundamentals. They're not going in and we just do fundamentals. <laughs> you got to do more than fundamentals with Christianity um, and with the Bible. And it's a lot to take in, and it can be devastating to your faith system when you go in. And you go like, oh my god. <laughs> What do you mean this isn't right? And what do you mean this is a <laughs> this is a forgery? You know, at first you're like, I've been told that this is all like written by Jesus and sent down. Like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? You know, um, it's an and then you start to and you start to get excited about it and you want to tell people about it and then they tell you, well, well, the hell you don't believe in is where you're going for questioning it. And I choose this idea over you. I would never put my kids above. Uh, 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 I mean, below, I would never put God above my kids. I don't put myself above my kids. My kids are my, my kids. And I would think that that's probably the most Christ-like thing to do. You know, I've always felt like if, if there's something in the Bible that gets away in your love, love, I mean, it gets away from you loving, remember that love is always the trump card in the Bible. If you read like what Paul says about love, what Jesus says about love, what Peter says about love, what James says about love, this is a trump card, folks. Boom. Like, just everything gets thrown out the door. Now, you guys could argue with me, and you're more than welcome to argue with me. I'm going to try to do more stuff where we can argue together. Um, I'm planning on, uh, in a couple Tuesdays from now, this Tuesday, I'm going to do a Q&A around 11.30 on Instagram, Revolution's Instagram, so you can tune in for that and question, do more questions there. Um, 
But then we're going to do a, the following Tuesday, we're going to start an in-depth uh, look at the book of Romans. And I don't know how, how we're going to do it Zoom-wise, or we're going to do it here, or what, because I really want there to be a back and forth. But having family, so I get it. Like when people are like, oh, you know, you know, it, it, because for me, what it does is it makes me feel like that religion is all bullshit. You know, because I, like, I'm like, wow, it's funny that you choose not to have me in your life, but you're also divorced. And in that denomination you're in, you're not supposed to preach anymore. You know, it's funny which ones you choose to agree with and disagree with, you know, and it's the ones weird that you would hold on to the one that says, you know, oh, reject your, your kids, or, you know, that tradition, like that's a shitty tradition, and I don't see how that's Christ-like at all. Now listen, folks. Why am I going on this rant page? It's because I want you to know that grace is tough for me to give as well. As you can see now, like it's pouring out of my mouth, and I thought this might be what happens if I took these notes down and started reading them to you that I would just get mad. But I have to breathe and realize, like, I want to argue well. That's why I don't go and be like, I denounce my father, Jim Baker, because I want to argue with him. I want to have hard conversations with him. I want to say, why haven't you been a better dad? And why would you choose religion over me? You know, I don't understand that. So, so what I'm trying to say is, like, when I get pushback, this is the talk I'm going to send to folks who keep pushing back saying, you have no idea. I mean, I've had progressives where they were talking about preacher's kids and stuff. And I got on and they told me I wasn't welcome there because I had an empathy towards the pastor's family. You know, um, I, I watch people trade one legalism for another. And I don't want to become what I hate. You know, and, and hate's a strong word. I don't want to become, and, and it's not the people I hate, but it's the information. It's the misinformation. It's the attitude that comes with it that, that, that breaks my heart. But I'm not going to hate them. Um, but honestly, after having that, you know, seeing that video with my dad, I, I wanted to burn my Bible and, and, and just get a normal, just go call the target and say, like, why haven't you guys called me back? Or why haven't you sent me an email? I can stack boxes, just I want out. Um, and really never think about religion again. But I keep coming back. When I see legalistic Christians being anti-LGBTQ, I saw, there's a video today I posted uh, with, with Dan replying of this pastor. He's like, you can't be gay and a Christian. You're going to go to hell. And you can't do this. You're going to go to hell. You know, I mean, I'm surprised how many of these folks want to suffer. I mean, no wonder they don't care about the atrocities that are happening in Palestine and Israel or that they just choose one side over the other and they're like, oh, we'll choose violence over violence, you know, because they're whole, you know, they're sending their family members to be tortured for eternity in ovens, never stop burning. So maybe that's why <laughs> it's easy for them to say, oh, I'll give up my family. But I'm telling you what, that's not, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that hardened in my heart. I don't want any religion or any music or any scene or any group to take my heart and make it that hard. Where I could just go like, well, they're going to burn in hell because, and I'll never see him again. Oh, well, we'll have good dinners in Gold Streets, you know. Or, you know, well, those people should be murdered because, you know, the other ones are going to get us to God, you know. It's like, Christians are so manipulative with Jewish folks in, in, in Israel, it drives me insane. You know, and I want to say, you know, you can... Hey guys, you can't just go and make a red calf and have it walk through a door or do whatever you gotta do and turn around three times and, and trick God into coming back. You know, I mean, it's just preposterous. It's, 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 fanta it's fantastical fantasy thinking. It's magical thinking. It's just not real. But it makes me so angry to see these like legalistic people just saying like, oh, these people are going to hell and these people are going to hell and these people, go, you know, it's like, please, like the first thing I want to do is I want to punch you. But that's the first thing in my Terminator <laughs> punch, <laughs> scream, <laughs> write really mean tweets, <laughs> find out who they are and learn to argue with them well and find out why they believe this way. You know? And that's one of the things you learn from psychology is you realize a lot of these people are doing projection, a lot of these people are struggling with their own things and they're in horrific pain and all they can do is cause pain with their pain. Um,
being people supporting war wants me to, I want to give up. I feel pain to the depths of my soul so often. And this isn't like, I'm, a, I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm not saying I'm a saint. I'm honestly haphazardly human, folks. You know? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. There are times where I don't want to live. There's times I want to give up. There's times I'm afraid I'm going to lose everything. I don't have very many friends. I'm really introverted and, and, and you know, it's tough. Life is, is not an easy thing. So I, I just, this assumptions that we make on each other when we always assume that someone else has got the greener grass, that their life is together. Like, um, you know, even just like being like, oh, well, men, you know, and I'm like, yeah, but men are killing themselves at such a high rate between the ages of 40 and 50. It's insane because they don't feel like they don't know where they belong anymore. They don't know where they fit in. So I can rip. I tried to kill myself five years ago and failed. I woke up in a, in a hospital, you know, um, so, so I understand this. And I hate that I have to get on here and bitch and moan about my pain and my hurt to, to help people realize. Like that's the, that's that's like the the great conundrum here, right? It's like <laughs> the oxymoron, you know. It's like I'm complaining about complaining about complaining. You see what happens with it. And so this is one of the reasons I choose grace. You know, why I continue to come back to arguing well and seeing each other's humanity. You know, I often, why did Christians turn on my folks so fast and so many? You know, I mean, I remember sitting in churches and pastors using my parents as examples, not knowing I was there. I was in a youth group once and the guy knew I was there and still made fun of my parents when he took the offering. You know, I mean, I was like 15 years old, you know, and I was just like, I just want to make friends, <laughs> you know, I bought new shoes for the whole event, you know, and nope. Um, why do people say such mean shit? Because they're being hit with it too. And, and we, we just kind of end up becoming a mirror, you know, well, I'll just hit you with mean left stuff. You hit me with mean right stuff. And you know, whoever survives, I guess wins. Um, but it's just destroying people's lives. Why don't people care more? You know, it's crazy, man. Like people don't care. They, they, they struggle with it. Some people do care. You guys care. <laughs> I care. <laughs> but sometimes like that's tough too. That's a tough road as well. You know, because everybody's trying to survive, you know, and they're like, that's your issue. I got to survive over here. You know, um, I got to save my own life and my own family's life. I can't help you out, you know, and that's why Christianity is interesting to me and why I still subscribe to it is because it's about loving the other. It's about loving your neighbor. It's about loving your enemy. It's about, you know, if I have a crumb, I'm going to split that crumb in half and share it with the person next to me. You know, it, it's, it's the good Samaritan. It's the woman at the well. It's, you know, it's Paul the Apostle, the guy who was like, I'm going to kill all the Christians. And now it's like, no, you're going to reach Christians. As a matter of fact, you're going to reach the Gentiles, the ones that you really despise. You know, to me, that's, uh, there's really a lot of beauty in that. There's a lot of beauty in Jesus being on a cross going, my God, where are you? Why have you left me? Why have I am abandoned? You know, these are the things that draw me back and keep me coming back and allow me to not live in so much anger. You know, for a long time, people were like, oh, you're just so angry. You're just, you're so hurt, you know. That was a lovely talk, but you're really hurt, you know. And it's like, no shit. Like, yeah, I'm hurt, but I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to heal. I'm trying to have these conversations. But in order to be transparent, I have to say, we have to talk, have these conversations. We have to say tough things. We have to hear things that we don't like. That's just part of it, you know. So some, some points I'll get up and I'll say some stuff and be, oh, you're so angry. I'm like, I'm not really angry. I, these are just examples of things I've, you know, yes, what, what you're, you're, you're thinking, I, may, I was angry, you're right. But I had to learn to let go. But I speak on it and I talk about it because I don't want to see it repeated in others' lives. You know, it's the idea of becoming what, what, to others what you didn't have as a child or what you didn't have growing up or what you didn't experience in the church, you know. A lot of when I started Revolution 
after the two years, I started it with some friends, but then when I started it on my own, a lot of it was, how do we do exactly opposite of what the church is doing? Like, how do we do what we, how do we get rid of all the things that made us feel uncomfortable? So that's why we didn't have music. Uh, we didn't have, you know, you know, we just, everything we could just try to take out. Like, how can we be different? You know, and how can we embrace people and care about people and be different from the church, but at the same time be a church, you know? And, um, and I'm glad to say that's probably what got it, got revolution in such trouble. Um, and, and also a lot of attention over time, not just the fact of who my parents were. Um, unfortunately, not a lot, you know, hasn't got us real, really excited, not really famous. Um, I feel unlovable a lot. You know, I feel like I push people away and I do. You can ask friends, you can ask people I've worked with, does Jay eventually push you away? And they would probably say, yeah, you know, because he's afraid of, you know, disappointing people. So he pushes them away and disappoints them even worse. That happens, you know. Um, I remember when, uh, when people would show up to Revolution and be like, I, I just feel a call of God to work for you. And I like knew like, this is just gonna end bad because this person thinks I'm awesome. And usually they think I have some sort of like huge, <laughs> like facility back in the days, especially back in Atlanta. Oh, I love, I love to see your facilities. I'm like, we rent a place, you know, we auto bop and we have an auto body shop friend of ours who lets us have a little office in his auto body shop. You know I mean? It was like, and these are these people would be like, I just left and I can't believe it. You know? And a lot of the times it would be like, not that I was uh, mean, it would be <laughs> let them down. It was just like when they started doing dumb things like, Oh, I went out and got drunk and he didn't kick me out. Or I had sex with my girlfriend and he asked me to, you know, come pick chairs up after the service, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> I just tried to show grace, man. Um, you know, you go, why don't people support revolutions work more? Why don't we, why aren't we at the place we used to be at? You know, why are we made all these sacrifices and, you know, and we did all these things to try to be the good guys, but, you know, um, and, and, and do the right thing, you know, follow our convictions. Why, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're just tickling ears. You're tickling ears and trying to get into their wallets. I'm like, well, guess what? It doesn't work, folks, you know. And those are things that, that I'm insecure about. I don't want to say that here on, on, at a revolution gathering. I don't want to sit here and admit my faults to you. I don't want to sit there and, and ask, say like, well, sometimes I wonder why people don't donate more or why, you know, revolution isn't a thriving ministry. I, but you know what? The first thought is, is because Jay, you're bad. You're wrong. You're a loser and you don't do enough. You know, because I hear my father's voice as a kid. You know, and my dad was a workaholic, and so anybody else who wasn't was kind of seen as lazy. And so um, I feel that way all the time. I have all these negative voices. But I've gone through DBT, I've gone through psychoanalysis, and these things to kind of work on it. Again, I'm going to bring back this talk. Let's reel it back in. This talk is to say, like, grace is not always the first choice. It takes a minute to get to grace. Arguing well is not what my first lineup, the first thing I want to do. You know, my gut reaction is sometimes punch, not hug or heal or love or sit down or walk away. Like some people, oh, he just walked away. He says he argue well, so he just stopped talking. But usually I'll do that because I realize anything I say from this point on is just going to add more hurt and pain. I had this one argument with the same one that had to do with the church taxation stuff. And I'm like, of course, you know, majority of churches have been really horrible, blah, blah, blah. And the person was like, that's all I wanted to hear. All I wanted to hear was that you, the majority are bad. But now, you know, and, and they felt better. But then they also were like, but does you just want a pat on the back for being good? <laughs> well, I mean, a pat on the back, I guess, wouldn't be bad, but i um, not really going to do much at this point, you know. Um, would you like to make a tax deductible? You know, that kind of thing. You know, in your head, you're just trying to do these right things, but you also have the human part of you. So giving grace and continuing this type of work and this type of thing, even when it's not financially fulfilling, even when it's not doing everything I wanted to do and to continue to stick my head out there is because I had a wonderful mom who showed me and loved people. She loved people even when they came up and said she looked like a clown to her face when she said, they said, oh, your husband deserves a rotten hell, a rotten prison. 
even my dad was nice and kind before he went to prison. You know, sometimes people would come up and say these horrible things and they would just be like, God loves you, God bless you. You know, that was my dad's way of handling it. But my mom would be like, no, I want to meet you. I want to hug you. I want to know about you. You know, she had a group of kids making fun of her and she, she took them up to Marie Callender's and bought them all pie in the mall, you know? So to me, it's like I had this influence that was really this kind of living out Christ in front of me and this turning the other cheek and this loving your enemy. And I feel compelled, you know? It's like it might not be the first thing because I got my dad in me. I've got regular old Jay, punk rock, rebellion, anger, uh, contradiction, I mean, all that within me. Um, Self-doubt. But that love that my mom showed me just through her actions. And I don't think we realize, like, people don't change unless we sit down and talk with them. Like, I've seen people slowly change through conversations. Um, I've seen people who were not gay-affirming uh, become gay-affirming. I've spoken at churches that did not support gay rights and, and then years later became supportive of gay rights. And I'm not saying it's me, but what I'm saying is that there had to be a conversation. And I mean, I was speaking at some of these places when I couldn't even get my most progressive friends to do it because they thought it was suicide. You know, they're like, oh, it's career suicide to say that. I mean, I remember some people that people saint, you guys have saint, made into saints. So I see people talk about some of these folks and they, they're talked about as almost saints coming to me being like, do you think it's going to hurt my book, book sales if I, call, if I become LGBTQ affirming? You know, and I'm like, listen, if you're worried about your book sales, you know, just keep your mouth shut, you know. Like, if that's what's important, that's what's important. You know, I get it. You want your foot in the door. You want to have, no, I just want to have the most, you know, influence. I want to be in, on the inside, you know. And, um, you know, and those people were pretty successful and their timing was a lot better. Um, like someone like Mark Driscoll, I saw a clip of Mark Driscoll the other day and I thought that guy disappeared off the face of the earth. And, uh, you know, I want to hate Mark Driscoll. I want to hate the video of the guy who's saying, gay people aren't going to get into heaven and I'm just preaching the gospel. I mean, I want to hate these folks. I want to hate my dad sometimes. But I feel what some would call the Holy Spirit. Maybe I feel like grace come into my life and say, you can't hate this. This, this person is damaged. They are horrifically damaged and they are damaging lots of other people. You've got to end the damage. You can't continue the damage because it will just continue to make these people worse and angrier and more hurt. And we won't have, you know, and then other people will not even be able to care for them or have empathy for them if you hate. If you go in and you fight them and you do these things. That is not the way to do it. I mean, and in these, and now there are joys in arguing well because you can get in zingers and things like that, and you can have jokes, and you can do this, and you can be human, and you can get gratification. It's not all like I'm a poor monk, and I, you know, no. I mean, you get gratification. You get to know people, you know, and um, and some people might not change, but you might have a friend for life in a really weird way. I remember a few, uh, a few months ago, I was having a really financially tough time and I had talked to a couple people about it. And one of my friends who used to work with me, first person I ever fired, first person I ever fired, okay? First person, I fired this person from Revolution. Not a lot of stories of me firing people. <laughs> and when they found out I was going through, they said, hey, what's your Venmo? I want to hook you. I, I don't want to donate to your church. I want to help you. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so you just don't know. You don't know how life's going to work. And we're actually really, really close friends. Um, this rant's almost an hour. Resentment, anger, and fear, you know? So often it feels like I'm fighting a Terminator that doesn't want me. To show grace and wants me to feel all these things you know it never stops there's always a new group to like test you you know like i remember just how shocked i was when i started seeing progressives become like cancelers and really judgmental and really angry and really like 
well, he was just, da, 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 you know, just like just discounting me right away and going like, what? And they're like, oh, is your male white ego been hurt? You're like, no, my human ego, my human heart hurts. <laughs> You know, you're not being very nice. And I don't know, is there a group of people that act really cool when you're really not nice to them and, and, and make them sound like their thoughts and feelings are shit? You know, um, I want to leave the world better than I found it and be a good dad. That's ultimately what I want out of my life. And I thank that because I think of Tammy Faye and what Tammy Faye brought into my life what grace has brought in my life, what the Apostle Paul has brought into my life. I really wish you guys in the church would re, in the progressive, reclaim Paul, get Paul back. And Paul really talks so much about grace and mercy and, and, and so much good stuff there that, you know, I, I don't know how people miss it. Like, I feel like that's part of the, 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 the kryptonite to, to some of the progressives and why they can be, are so judgmental is because they don't read Paul enough, you know? It's like, oh, do you like that Jesus? Well, Paul's an asshole, you know? And it's like, you got to reframe it. You got to put it into perspective. You got to look at it. And when you start to reframe it, put it into perspective. When you start realizing the pastoral epistles or forgeries and things like that, you go, oh, something else is happening here. Um, Paul is closer to Christ than any of the Gospels by like quite a bit of time. So it's, it's worth understanding that this guy probably got it a little bit more. He never talks about hell. He talks about destruction and he talks about judgment, but he never talk, never mentions any of the three translations of hell, you know? So that's pretty interesting. Like his judgment is more of like a, you know, hey, send this person away so their soul's okay. And I don't know if it's like there's, you don't, you don't go to hell. You, you know, he doesn't, there's no, you can't build any, any, you know, except good afterlife or annihilation really from Paul. Um, so give Paul a chance. Are we a saying? <laughs> um, but I also want to give up and die. Like I said before, I've tried. You know, and I will try to stay away and not be so harsh on my progressive brothers and sisters because they start to get sensitive and be like, why are you so mean to us and not the other ones? I'm like, because the other ones are kind of obvious, but you guys are being mean and you used to not be as mean. Um... <laughs> And I care about you, and I don't want you to be mean. It's probably an easier, easier conversation to have, you'd think. Friendly fire, like friendly fire just destroys me, and I think it's what's destroyed the church over the years is friendly fire. So I, I'm just going to leave you with a few things. Remember Romans, remember Corinthians 13. Remember last week. Go back, listen to that talk. Remember what it talked about love and what love is. I think that's important. Um... I'm going to read Romans 6, 6 really quick. Yes, we're going to get in the Bible, don't worry. We're Bible-believing church. Um, we know our Lord, we know our old self was crucified with Him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but he who has died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. And I think when you really look at this, it's not all about like, don't go to rated R movies because you've died with Jesus. <laughs> like, I think that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> don't listen to Nine Inch Nails or corn because Jesus died for you. Uh, I think it has more to do like, don't destroy each other. And when we don't destroy each other, when we've died to Christ, and when I'm saying when we died, I think the things that were dying and what I'm talking about are those usually those first couple of... Uh, knee-jerk reactions in our Terminator screen, you know what I mean? And the, like, fight this person, punch this person, belittle this person. Like, those things, as like, that for me is dying to Christ. That for me is dying to my mother's memory. That to me is, 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 is when I've heard people say, let go and let God, if you want to get really spiritual. That's what I'm trying to do right there. When I go, Whoa. have you guys ever written out a tweet and, like, just a nail by it, just a crusher? And then they're like, oh, you can't send it, so you cancel it. And then it's like, you want to save? You're like, yeah, I'll save that just in case. <laughs> you know, I've done quite a few of those. I've done some where I've sent, and then I've had to unsend, um, you know. But that's what I think when it, it, it what, 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 what that verse is talking about is when we've died with Christ, it's this kind of concept that we have to be 
right, right away, and people have to agree with us right away or the conversation's over. Um, Galatians, my favorite book, which I've tried to stay out of all year because we do a big study. And the great thing about the Roman study that we're going to do is get, it's going to be at, on Tuesday nights. And by the beginning of the next year, we'll probably still be finishing that up and, and doing Galatians on Sundays. And those two books have so much intertwined. It's, it, it, Paul's work is so intertwined and you can see Paul's growth and stuff. It's really wild. It's really wild to watch. And then we get to talk about Romans 1. Oh, the first week. Um, so Galatians uh, 6, 6 says, May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which this world has been crucified to me and I to the world. And I really think when Paul is saying I can't boast about anything is because Paul is saying, as he talks about, and I think, uh, was it Romans 7 or Romans 8? I try to do what I want, but I don't. You know, he's just saying, like, I can't even boast about my good deeds, you know, because it's Christ in me. It's these things that are trying to get me to die to myself. You know, it's these things inside me that are, that are trying to get me to, you know, um, it, it's Christ in me that I, I, you know, and that's what I feel like I have to say. You know, it's like, it's Jesus. It's, it's the, my mom and, and what she saw in, in the message of Christianity. You know, it's uh, what I've learned from years and years of studying that like all this complicated stuff, it still takes me down to this basic of loving your enemies and, and, and uh, praying for those who persecute you, you know. Um, but it's tough. I feel like a talk like this sometimes is kind of like uh, having your cake and eating it too because I'm kind of like, oh, and I'm so mad at these people and mad at these people. So I'm able to be like, but not really. <laughs> Honestly, that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is show my street cred. What I'm trying to do is what Paul was doing in Galatians in the beginning of Galatians. He's like, I'm an apostle and I was chosen by... I'm not saying I'm an apostle, but what I'm trying to say is like, I understand when you push back about arguing well. I understand when you push back about grace because I want to do it too. You know, I understand what hate and resentment feels like. You know, I understand what despair feels like. Um, and what did Jesus say? Let's look over at Matthew. <laughs> um, for those of you who, who aren't fans of Paul, I'll give you some Jesus. Um, you red letter Christians out there. Um, Jesus says, then Jesus told his disciples, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save, their life will lose it. And those who lose their life will find it, will, for my sake, will find it. And that's what I feel like I've done. I've found my life by not, by giving up, having to be so goddamn right all the time and so hurtful and so angry and so mean or being a bully or any of that crap. Like it's just, it's still in me. It's still a daily fight, you know? I still do the wrong things when I want to do right. That chapter in Matthew, it's Matthew 16, uh, 24. And, and I'll leave you with this, folks, because I've taken enough of your time. And I'm grateful that so many of you have showed up and, and stuck with me for so long. I, I, I'm grateful. That, and thanks for listening to me rant. I just felt like I had to do a talk like this so I could say, hey, you know, if you really don't, if you understand, I struggle with this too. Please, please listen to this talk. It's just me letting go of some things. Um, to let you know that I'm not considering myself a saint or some like, you know, delusional white male on a cloud. I mean, I'm literally one bill away from losing things. And then I have people around me who are belittling me because I haven't found a job yet. Um, and it sucks. It really hurts. I want to feel like an adult. I want to feel like human. And I hate when people say, oh, you need to get a real job and treat what I've been doing for 30 years as like some sort of fantasy lifestyle of like a rock and roll lifestyle. It's like, you know, um, Dr. King, well, first of all, I'm going to say grace, there are no asterisks with grace. So no more asterisks. Grace is anarchy. That's another point. 
Grace can no longer have an asterisk next to it. So when you're forgetting, oh, I'll give grace to those who recognize. Nope, that's not how grace works. You're going to give them grace because they don't recognize your humanity. You're going to give them a grace because they're assholes, because otherwise they don't need grace. You know, you're going to give them grace because they don't feel human enough or because they feel insecure, and you're going to love them and help them change and grow and feel loved and feel accepted and show them what grace really is. You know, we, we will probably follow up the Galatian study with the reading of Paul Tillich's You Are Accepted, and then we'll post uh, Peter Rollins reading that again because it's a sermon worth being heard over and over again because it's probably one of the best sermons on grace besides, like, it's probably one of the best sermons ever, you know. It's top five, I'd say, for me. So grace doesn't get an asterisk, folks. When you start putting an asterisk or saying, oh, well, grace, but not for, then you go, oh, shoot, that's who it's for. That's how you find out. When you start making a list of who doesn't get grace. And um, Dr. King is such a hero. You know, Dr. King told people not to fight, fight in Vietnam. And he got, I watched this story, I posted it. You have to get through a lot of like, explanations before but if you watch the whole talk dr king says oh you know you misunderstand what i'm saying you're misconstruing what i'm saying i'm not just saying that black people should not serve in the military and should not fight vietnam he's saying i'm saying no one should go to vietnam you know imagine if king was alive now and saying things about israel and palestine or saying things about the wars that were in you know, uh, all over the place and saying, don't do these wars, we would all be like, you're canceled. Um, Y'all be canceling Dr. King because Dr. King's not easy, man. He, he's, he's got lots of nuances. And that's not me whitewashing King. I mean, I'm just saying King will, will push you to your limits. But Dr. King said in one of his famous quotes, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great of a burden to bear. And I see some of you who have decided to go with hate out there and you don't even realize it's hate. It's kind of like this kind of counterfeit grace that I see like Christians use and now like non-Christians and ex-Christians. And I see a lot of people using this kind of like counterfeit love and counterfeit grace, um, but, but it seems to be so hateful. And the thing is, is you know, I have, when, when, when Dr. King says hate is too great of a burden to bear, it's that I don't see a personality. I see people get so eaten up by anger and what they're against and what they hate that they just become a shell of themselves. That they become, that's what they are. Like you'll see it a lot on like social media. They'll be like, X Christian or X this or X, that, you know, and they're all like, you know, and it's, that's what it's about, you know, or Jesus loving Christian or, you know, if there's an American flag and a praying hands or a cross, you're like, oh, you know, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that there's hate in those places and you will see that hate is like yeast, man. It's like it just spreads and goes a long way. And then all of a sudden that's like their personality. You know, they might look like me and you, but then they, you know, you say the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing and it's like, <sniffs> and uh, these are the folks that we have to help set free from that because that burden on them is way too heavy and we're supposed to share one another's burdens and the times we have to like carry our own because it's so heavy and but you know when you see somebody on their own carrying their burden maybe say hey can i help you and so dr king said i have decided to stick with love hate is too great of a burden to bear that's today's talk um thank you for listening thanks for sticking with me for such a long time and um I hope you understand like grace, people go, oh, cheap grace. And I say, oh, that's not cheap, it's free. Um, but it does come at this idea of like not your first reactions. And there is suffering. And there is always a temptation, you know, to just, you know, I always think the last temptation of Christ shouldn't be like Jesus getting married and having a family. It should have just been him like blasting hellfire down on everybody and people's heads exploding and been like, that may have been the last temptation of Christ or like God being like, I'm burning! And Christ being like, yeah, you left me here. How do you like it? <laughs> that might have been one of the last temptations of Christ as well. Um, you know, it would be interesting to see what the last temptations of all the apostles who were uh, martyred were, was. 
you know. I mean, there was a reason Peter was like, I don't know that guy. Um, anyway, so I, I did a video on Instagram about fundraising for Revolution. Um, if we wanted to make it comfortably through the end of this year, we need to raise about uh, 20 grand. Our minimum budget is $1,000 a week, and that's what we're about bringing in. Um, but my uh, financial people in New York, Ken, on the phone said it would be really great if you had more because then we could pay more bills and we could also pay you back for six months that you took no pay and help you kind of stay on your feet and maybe focus on this full time again. Um, but that's what we would need to do is 20, 10 just to survive. Um, I don't know, maybe we need to do one of those thermometers or something for raising funds. I don't like doing it, but my buddy Steve said, Jay, you got to do it more. So I'm going to start doing it more, but I'm not promising anything. I'm not going to say your barns are going to overflow or anything like that. Um, but this will get even better and we're going to do more. And hopefully in uh, 2024 on our uh, 30th year anniversary of revolution, we will have a new place to be meeting in Seattle area. If you know any great dive bars with theaters, uh, hit us up online on Instagram. Uh, that's where we spend a lot of our time at. Let us know what's going on there. And uh, if you know any good places and uh, to meet, we can start doing that as well. And like I said, Tuesday night, uh, not this next Tuesday, I'll be live on Instagram this next Tuesday doing a QA. and a But the following Tuesday, um, that's the Tuesday before Halloween, and I think it's the 23rd, but I'm not exactly sure because I don't have a calendar in front of me. Um, I'm going to start the Romans, unless I get a job. If I get a job, then I'll let you know. But uh, another job, part-time job, which I'm looking for, if you know any good places around town as well. I'd love to do like a bookshop or a tattoo parlor, a music store would be great. But um, right now I'm starting to be like, oh, maybe I'll just work at Target or uh, Walmart or things like that. Um, anyhow, um, but yeah, so we're going to try to do that. And it's going to be in depth. I've already been, I've already done like three months worth of studying. So this Roman study will not be just, you know, maybe like, and then Paul said, but we got to figure out also a way to do that. So if you're interested in having some word on that, and if we should do Zoom or anything like that, let us know. Uh, so we're going to start doing that. And I want to do a lot more of that. And we can only do all that stuff with your support and uh, allows me to study and do this work and uh, hopefully start a little community here in Seattle, Washington, again, at 47 years old. <laughs> Love you guys. Peace, and um, see you next Sunday, or see you Tuesday. Bye-bye. For listening. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. To make your 100% tax deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website.